That's right. This is Bad Weather Fans, episode number 38 with Mike and Alex. And the NBA season is creeping closer and closer and closer and closer. We're almost this there. December 22nd, the NBA season starts and the Christmas schedule was leaked. So, Alex, mm-hmm. I should mention our names. It was Mike not my dream. Alex. Matchup. How are episode you doing? Yes, How excited were I, I you didn't, I, you know, you? I. The, the Knicks make the Christmas Day schedule. Were the Knicks there? I saw the Nets made it, but honestly, I only saw one of the five games. Are the Knicks on the schedule? They are not. They are not. And all the uh, even Leon, your cat, wanted to know, wanted to Jeez. get in on that one. Yeah, terrible. But, <laughs> every reporter in the NBA had to mention that the Knicks are not on the Christmas Day schedule. Like so is not. So is not seventy five percent of the NBA. Is that that I said that right? Probably about 75% of the NBA didn't make the Christmas Day schedule, but I know the Knicks usually make it and blah, 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 blah. I don't even, did people anyway. even say that? Like other people are saying the Knicks didn't Holy make it. I don't even yes, care. Did. Oh, it was. Uh, no, then I feel world, like I'm my Twitter world, everybody retweets it. Yeah. Yeah, you are. You look like you just, you know, <laughs> it's just an easy joke, but you're doing it as a joke. These people are like really yeah. like, you know, clout chasing. As the, no, as the kids say. no, I was happy yeah. the Nets made the Christmas Day schedule. I think it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But the thing about the Nets Christmas Day schedule is so the yeah. Nets are playing the Celtics uh, at five o'clock p.m. Eastern time in Boston. So take away the pandemic like Kyrie going to Boston. So you and I have a rivalry where, where we talk Nets Knicks. But truth be told, too, like Nets Celtics is going to be fun this year because mm-hmm. of the Kyrie dynamic like the Celtic fans hate him um so the fact that the nets are going on christmas day to boston is awesome from like a tv drama standpoint but then it's like there's no one there so what does it even really matter which i thought just it it just brought me back to this whole pandemic it's like oh that sucks like that'd be so much fun to watch for basketball fans no It, it that's what it is, man. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> but hopefully we by the end of the season, we'll have fans in the stands and we'll be back to semi-normal. But as of now, can't see it. But I do think, I, like I said on Twitter, that I do think that uh, Knicks, Nets, Noon probably might have been the move if, they, if there were fans. I know you think otherwise. We were talking I about do. it right before the show. Because, like, you know, it's a lo- more of a local buzz. But I think that Knicks, Nets thing is a li- little bit of a pull. But the Nets have the star power to be on in the the afternoon, the prime time yeah. Christmas day, not the ones where like 12 o'clock, like everybody's still sleeping or opening up presents or, you know, whatever at that time, you know? So it is what it is. Yeah. Anyway, I th- so I listen, think... real quick. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, then we'll no, get go the ahead. Nice stupid thing I was going to talk about. No, no, go ahead. Continue. Uh, no, I just think, Net, I think Nets Celtics yeah. has more pull than Nets Knicks nationally. I, I, I mean, yeah. like I, more star I don't want to lose the Boston. Not even the star power. Yeah. I think the Kyrie Celtic thing mm-hmm. is a real story. Like, and I, and I try to put it in somebody else's shoes. Like, if you're watching this game and you live in Sacramento, you live in Detroit, you live in Indiana, you live in Memphis, and you're like, oh, the Nets are playing the Knicks. No offense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. think people in Memphis care about RJ Barrett's development. I do think <laughs> they find it interesting on a national level. Kyrie Irving going back to Boston, I think that intrigues mm-hmm. the basketball fan on the whole in the country more than it does on the net Knicks side of things. Now, right. you and I might have a different view on that, but I'm trying to take a, mm-hmm. a more um, national landscape. I think that has more of an interest than the Knicks do, and the Knicks can change that if they play better. But I think like the Kyrie Celtic thing is so sour and went so bad. And we've been through so much as a nation and a country and everything that's happened that we kind of forget that. Nobody but, cares. But but yeah. that was that was bad. Like you know, Kyrie, I'm a Celtic, and what happened? But you'll and, have you me know, back. Yeah, bad yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. That's my oh, point guard. Kyrie. But I get it. The wishy washy, the wishy washy Kyrie. That's what happened. You know, mm-hmm. he had his little mood swings and he switched teams. You know, that's he what did. happens. <laughs> but anyway, he did. So this is episode 38. <laughs> I, I looked this up right before we went on episode 38. Can you name the Knicks and the Nets that wore number 38? No. Can you? Before looking it up. At all? Before looking it up? No, I could not. Do you know why I'm, we could not? Um, well, go ahead. Try to guess. Try to guess. Try a to guess. Net 38? I have mm-hmm. I don't know. If I hear it, will I be like, oh, man, I should have known that? No. Hmm. Okay. 
You know, I, you, we don't have we we can't think of one. There are none. There has never been a Nick or a Nick with number thirty-eight. Okay, good. That makes good, me feel man. better. Good. See. Yeah. See, you knew there was none, but I confused you a little bit. I threw. It was a trick question. So no, you got you me. Off. That Nick sense of humor was really <laughs> fantastic. You tricked me. I know <laughs> it on thick. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So I was starting to go to, to Jets number 38s, but then I just got bored. I'm like, all right, who cares? There's probably a million of them and then Giants, who knows? You know, whatever. Yeah, but, um, NFL numbers. Like, no. yeah. Isn't that crazy? 38 is such an ugly number. Like, who would want that number? In it is weird. I feel like that's once you get to like over 36, it's just kind of like, did who's you ever been 37 uh, to 39? There's never been 37, an... 36, 37, 38, and 39 in Nets history. You know that, right? Wait, say, say that again. There's never been a 30. 6, 37, 38, or 39 in Nets history. How about that? And there's never been a 37, 38, or 39 in Nick's history. Are those numbers people don't wear? Like in, just I beyond just, Nets, just Knicks? Just an ugly number. There was a 36 on the Knicks. Can you name okay, it semi-recently? Okay. Come on. Okay. This is the last one. You got to name this one. Semi-recently, number 36. A Future Nick? Hall of Famer if he's not already in. Yeah. Moochie Norris. <laughs> no. Rashid Wallace, bro. Come on. 36. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a very have... riveting podcast. <laughs> right I, um... I think people are into this kind of stuff. I love the number th- number stuff, like the numbers of this players and like what numbers look good on team, on players. And like, well, so why is what, 38 you know... an ugly number, but 36? I don't isn't? know. It's just that not a fashionable sense. number. I mean, I just feel like, yeah, it doesn't make sense, but never, ever. And the Knicks have been around since the 40s, never a 38, ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what crazy. was your number? My number, I was like, I always like number three or number 25 or seven. Seven is like my birthday day. Hmm. Three, I just always liked. And I don't know, 25 is just three and seven are two of my favorite nets. Yeah. Three was from, and 33, of course, because of Ewing. And three because of Starks. Seven because I'm a big, uh, you know, Kenny Walker fan. Three because of Drazen, who was better than Starks. Three because of Drazen. He was. Mm. He was. He didn't have a better career, but he He would have. He would have been. No, for sure. Would have. Sure. I got to tell you, though, I was, yeah. So Starks was a Nick from 91 to 98, right? And he was number three. I'm looking at it right now. I'm cheating the exact years. And it was the 90s. And then I remember the next the next number three got me so mad because it wasn't a real Nick. Can you name the number first number oh. three after John Starks? To no, me, no. I'm like a kid. I'm like, John Starks, his number should be in the oh, rafters. Yeah. I'm like, this is the, my guy. Yeah. Dennis Scott. He was a <laughs> Nick? Like the, the, yeah, he was a Nick for one year. He was a show really? stuff. Here. Like, no, yeah, he was in. He was one of those. I had no like, idea he was a Nick. Training for players, yeah, yeah. No, he was. He was for one year. Where Terrible. did was, um, yeah. where did where did Starks play beyond New York? Was he on other teams? Yeah, yeah. They traded him to. I mean, he went to to the Warriors, and then I think the Bulls. Let me let me look that up. See, that's weird. Like, the and, you know, and I'm not yeah. a Nick fan, so I don't know John Starks. Career, but thinking of John Starks outside of the Knicks. Yeah, he That's went to the Warriors, weird one. the Warriors and the Bulls, and then Utah. The Bulls was the weirdest one, but he only played four games for them. That was the weirdest one for me. But sure, you know, he went to the Warriors, but you know, he before the Knicks he, and before he went to CBA, he went. He was started off with the Warriors, like he was a Warrior, mm. like originally. So like, which is crazy. So it wasn't like Pat Riley found John Starks bagging groceries in you know in super in a supermarket like the like the legend is. <laughs> like yeah. He actually was in the NBA and in the CBA. So it wasn't like, you know, really that as random as they say, but you know, whatever props to Pat Riley for finding him anyway, he became an all-star. So you love him anyway, John Starks. Yeah. He's a legend. Legend. Should have, should have retired his number <laughs> to say, should they, but if he hits that shot 94 and Olajuwon doesn't foul him at the end of game six, when they didn't call it, boy, what a uh, different, he would have been, he would have been, different... been, been, Jersey would have been retired. What a different yeah. history your team has if he made those shots, you know? Right. Yeah. Or no, no I'm talking no, about I... at the end of game six when he missed. Oh, okay. You're saying, oh, or in game seven. I got you. I got you. Do you remember yeah. those games no. or are you too young? No, I remember. I was in fourth grade and my parents actually let me stay up to watch those games because it was like mm-hmm. they knew that that was my world. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like they never let me do that yeah. otherwise when I was that young. But like for the, the, the finals, they were like, yeah, it's, it's okay. Like, you know. Just, you know, take a nap and like whatever. They were really good about that. Can you even fathom watching Nick finals games now? You know what? I can because I've seen them in the finals twice. But now it would be a different world. I feel like <laughs> it would be so different. 
it, it depends how they get to the finals because getting to the finals in 94 when they had a chance to win was a different feeling than getting there in 99 after yeah, no. Ewing got hurt. It was yeah. the eighth seed and the whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was, that was just like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. we're just happy to be here. You know what I mean? Kind of a mm-hmm. thing. But like 94, that was like, Oh, like, Oh my God, this is intense. It's exciting. And then they almost win game one and then they win game two. And then can they win three in a row? Is that the stupid two, three, two. And it was just like, you know, the OJ chase, what a classic final. So because of the, yeah, OJ, the chase, OJ chase, you know what I mean? Oh what a, like, God, remember the OJ chase. See, yeah. not not as not a, more on a, you know a personal level, but when the Nets made the finals yeah. in 02 and they played the Lakers, just happy to be there. But in 03 versus the Spurs, thought they they could win the title. You thought they could steal it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, that Laker team with Shaq no, and Kobe, they didn't they didn't stand a chance. And we had Richard Jefferson on the podcast, and I think he talked about it. Maybe it was us mm. about playing Shaq. Yeah. It was like it was just. It was just impossible. Like Shaq there, mm-hmm. it was just, just crazy. Well, Jason and, Collins, right? Jason Collins or McCullough, yeah, right? It was Tom McCullough yeah. and Jason Collins. It's just too <laughs> much. Shaq. Right, yeah, it's just like, too much. You know, and I think, I think the yeah. younger fans that maybe listen to this podcast or just in general mm-hmm. forget just how yeah. good prime Shaq was. I mean, he was just yeah. an unbelievable force. I mean, like a real cheat code. Really yeah. was. And uh, not, I know this is the, such a cliche topic. But man, it'd be fun to watch. It wasn't him just a dunker NBA. either. It would be fun to watch yeah. it. But I understand, like, <laughs> that's not a reality. But man, it'd be fun to see him in today's league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can run the break. People forgot that. He used to he get the dribble. ball on the break and run he was the so break. He's so athletic. <laughs> like, he can dribble. Yeah, <laughs> he was just like a big dude. And so he was like too bulky. Like, obviously, you know, he, but he couldn't shoot and, and like he couldn't hit the free throws. And if he could hit his free throws, he would have averaged like 50 mm-hmm. points a game. Easy. <laughs> Easy. But anyway, this is the podcast that we're doing today because there's really nothing to talk about. <laughs> like, you know, it's the same stuff over. Did you hear the Knicks didn't sign any free agents? Did you hear that uh, they did their uh, media day today and then R.J. Barrett was pissed he wasn't on the all-rookie team? Good. and Good. Be pissed. I'm Good. glad you're pissed, R.J. Barrett. I saw, I saw, I saw that. You did this fuel. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that and, and I was like, yeah. I saw that and I said, Nick fans should love that. And then, you know what the first thing I yeah. thought of when I saw that was? Me? No, no, it was Kevin Durant. <laughs> Why is that? Because he's feeling the same way. Mm. He's feeling like nobody thinks I can do this. Everybody thinks nobody can come off an injury and be good. And he's probably feeling that motivation. And then I started getting excited because I was like, I want, I want a motivated Kevin Durant. Mm. You have to remember this, Alex. Like you just 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 think about this from my perspective. Okay. It's been like 300 and Four four hundred million days since the Nets signed him. Right, I'm like I'm like in two weeks. I'm in three weeks. He's gonna play like in a weird world, it's, it's and crazy. like and, and the Net fans that you go up against on Twitter mm-hmm. are not you. No, 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 no. That are like, oh, KD, oh, yeah. this like he's gonna be here, and and then at least we can have some form of closure in a weird way, like mm-hmm. maybe. He's not gonna be. He's not gonna suck. But he's. Is no. he the version of himself? Is he this? Is he that? At least, like, thank you God that we can have a conversation in a couple of weeks. Like, I can't wait for us to do a podcast, and it's about the Nets are zero and two, and the Knicks are one and one, and you know we can have fun with it. I just, I can't even fathom what's he gonna look like on a court. I've had to watch like YouTube videos of this guy. You know, dribbling against Scott, like like he looks yeah, great. Like I'm like, enough. yeah. I mean, of Riding course he looks like somewhere. Of like, course, you know, like, of course he enough. looks yeah. good. He's playing against guys like me. Like I just yeah. like those Mitchell Robinson videos, dunking on like near you and just... oh my god, goddamn Mitchell <laughs> yeah, Robinson like... videos for the love of fuck. Yeah, I yeah. hope Mitchell Robinson stinks. <laughs> I, I just if, if all the Knicks you, are man? bad, it's him. Because the Nick, that's it. Yeah, no, nah, because he's so. messing with Spencer Dinwiddie. You know, if you're a Is Net he? fan, I didn't see that. Nah, I just did? Twi- maybe not. I'm making that up. On Twitter, oh, I would, okay. <laughs> I would say the big, the big he concern did. for the for the Nets should be this chemistry, because mm-hmm. obviously they wanted James Harden there, and obviously these are yeah. real people. So how does Spencer Dinwiddie? How does Jared Allen? I don't care about touring Prince. How do these guys feel about the fact that their best player wanted them out, and now they have to be your teammate? And you, you remember, like. If we did a podcast and I was like, you know what? I got to be honest. 
I can get a better Knicks host to come in here. Get Dolan. Like, we can Trump. make it yeah. like I want to get Dolan <laughs> here, but we couldn't make the money to work. And then it's like, yeah, it didn't work out. But it's right, like, yeah. Alex, let's do the podcast together. Joking aside, that would make our chemistry not as good, right? Toast. We so I mean, granted, we split I mean, off. Yeah. Granted, if <laughs> someone said, Mike, you're making $12 million a year to do the podcast, I go, okay, I'll figure it out. So there is a little bit of that. It's to a it business. To be, yeah. Right. It's a business. Yeah. But I understand, yeah. you know, relationships, it make this more more Egos. difficult to do. Yeah. Like we look at Karis LeVert or Spencer Dinwiddie and we're like, eh, look at these guys, whatever. But like they're like compared to like regular people, they're mm. freaking celebrities. They're millionaires. Yeah. Like they have like egos. They have people that work yeah. for them just to do their regular everyday stuff because they, you know, they're they're six foot seven or whatever. They can't just go to the supermarket or go to the dry cleaners. You know what I mean? So it's like it's crazy. And, yeah. you know, honestly, though, a little bit for me with Dinwiddie, it's kind of karma for me because he was plotting against D'Angelo Russell to get Kyrie Irving to the Nets while D'Angelo Russell was on the Nets. Remember right. that whole thing? He was like out there going to get it like, yo, man, we can get Kyrie. And probably D'Angelo sure. knew that. There's no way he was in like living with these guys and, you know, traveling Agreed. and doing all this. Agreed. Stuff. And that's props to D'Angelo Russell for still being a professional, still becoming an all-star, still helping the team to the playoffs. And like, that yeah. was like props to him, man. You know, but he's also been through so much with the Lakers that he had to keep it done. <laughs> Like he couldn't be a problem child again or they'd be out of the NBA. You know what I mean? So it's like, so there's a little bit of karma there for me. You know what I mean? Like I love her. It might've probably had something to do with getting Kyrie also like, you know, Hey man, come on, come on, bro. Come on. You know? And like, you don't blame them. It's just the business. So maybe they understand or it's karma. They're probably like, Oh damn, <laughs> we could have had this nice team here and you know, with D'Angelo, but now, you know, I guess we're getting out of here we built this thing and now we, we don't even get to reap the benefits of it, you know, kind of a thing. So, but oh. Last thing, Harden, it's like James Harden is that level. It's like, all right, well, you know what? Like, you can get James Harden. Like, I understand where you guys are coming from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, but so, uh, anyway. not to go, this is kind of past news, but I'm not, I'm mm-hmm. not all, all in on Harden as maybe you would be. Mm-hmm. I like, the, with, I with like the, the roster man. they have. I do. Mm-hmm. I like they're more fun. They're more relatable for you. Yeah. Right. Like you got yeah, your two like, mercenaries and you got your court culture nets and you're, you're excited. No, it's not even the culture them. nets, not even the culture nets. I don't care. No, about I'm that. calling them the culture nets, like the, the Allen and Dinwiddie. No, and no, Lever- no. They're the mentality nets. That's my new nickname <laughs> for them. They're the mentality nets. I'd like Alex. Uh, I like Karis. I think Karis is really good. Yeah. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. I'm all in on the bubble with him. I, I like him. I think he's a good player. I don't know. I, I don't think you need Harden. I think something bad comes with him, and I feel like he comes to the Nets. They're gonna have a bad exit. I don't know. There's bad mm-hmm. exits with James Harden. So I like the mojo here. Just keep the squad and let let's go. I like I like Karis. Not every big three works out, dude. Not if R.J. Barrett became out, Karis, yeah. you'd be thrilled. Yeah. Well, I, I'm hoping for a little more, but yeah, no, I'd be happy. At least he's a, a fringe solid all-star player kind of player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I I hope he's a little more, but you know, and I think he yeah can be, but we'll see. You know what I mean? We'll see. But he was all saying like what I was saying, and all every Knicks fan was saying is in his interview today, or whenever it was. Yeah, today, right? The media day, whatever they did. Who cares? They he he spoke. He said when he was yeah. mad about the all rookie team, he's like, yeah, I was turning it on towards the end of the season. Like I was really putting it together. Like I he really like had you know people are sleeping on him right now because people didn't really notice that you know what i mean besides like Knicks yeah it's like you were living in new york and or new jersey whatever in the metropolitan area you were you're around in the market you didn't even realize that until we until we started doing this you know what i mean like yeah. he was really like he was really turning it on so that's why it's exciting to see i mean i wish the Knicks added another piece you know to make the team a little better and we've been through that a million times but yeah. at the same time i'm still excited to see what obi Toppin is is he sean kemp is he charles barkley or is he you know uh you know i don't know Jared sean Green on steroids i don't know sean williams, <laughs> sean williams. boston, boston college yeah, nets so mm-hmm. i i, I think sean with an e at the end that was that was was he on the knicks is that that guy is that no sean i think it's different sean let's see i don't think he was different sean williams. But, but you bring up something that i think is kind of interesting yeah. on a global landscape mm-hmm. like because we're doing this I'm going to watch more Knicks games. Not because I want to, but I I feel like for me to do a better podcast, it's good that I, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to watch the Knicks. I'm going to watch the, I'm not going to watch the Knicks. I'm going to watch the Nets. But if you and I are going to have a conversation about both teams, I I feel like I owe it to the audience. And this is uh same here. 
the it's just I, I should I should have to watch it. Like I I should be informed on the Knicks. If I'm going to give educated opinions, it's not going to be like, oh, um, who was their coach last year? Mike Miller. Before that guy, Bizdale. Thank Bizdale. you. I just wanted to hear you say it. So if I'm going to be <laughs> critical of the coaching, it shouldn't mm-hmm. just be a landscape. Oh, oh, there's not talent. Like, yeah, they're not good enough to be a team that's in the playoffs, but they're better than a team that's going to be the worst team in the NBA. So I have right. to watch the Knicks. So where I'm going with all of that is I am excited for the fact that you are going to have to watch the Nets. We're going to win games, <laughs> and that's going to be freaking well, great. Unlike you, I actually like watching other teams basketball play. You know what I mean? I actually pay attention to other teams besides okay. my favorite team. <laughs> You're, I, you ain't wrong. But uh, no. No, I actually enjoy. I agree. What, like, I can't say I, I'm locked into, I've been locked into four quarters of a Nets Cavaliers game. I can't say sure. that. But I will pay Post attention LeBron. to if they won the game or what, what guy did what. I love yeah. watching the NBA TV uh, game time stats. Yeah. And when they have the box score up, I, like, I, I, can't, I, I can't get enough of that. I DVR it. And I'm also obsessed with fantasy basketball, you know, so it's just like that as well. So I get into all the teams and things like that. So I really do pay attention, but I'm definitely going, I was actually really thinking about that the other day. Like, it's funny that you said that I'm like, wow, I'm going to have to pay attention to Nets games a little more than I usually do just so I can understand the the day to day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, What's going on. You're not going to get me following certain accounts that are Nets fan accounts, but you (laughs) you will get me paying attention a little more. That's for sure. Well, I always got to be in tune with what's going on. I always yeah. think, for me personally, the best way to be in tune mm-hmm. with another team is to watch. There's no substitute yeah. for that. You can you can read, you can write, write. Um, that doesn't make sense. You can read, you can follow. You could write about it. I mean, you could write. Know. Dear Diary, <laughs> the New York. I don't know suck. what happened. <laughs> I don't know why Obi Toppin can't even jump. I watched all these videos and he could dunk. Now I'm realizing it wasn't him. No, you can, writing no. But you know what I'm saying? Like watching yeah, yeah, yeah. the games. There's no substitute for mm-hmm. that. If you watch the game, mm-hmm. right or wrong on your decision making, at least it's yours and you're not getting your opinion for someone else. So right, I'm going to have right. to watch the Knicks. Um, it's going to be tougher for me than it is for you. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. Because I'm going to be watching Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant crash and burn, and it's going to be more exciting yeah. for me than I'm for you to jerk. watch the Knicks win 15 games because they didn't add any free agents, you know, make any major trades. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is what it is. But so wh- honestly, I'm excited because I'm trying to be positive, trying to be positive because I'm excited to see Obi Toppin and Emmanuel quickly. I'm, I'm really excited to see these guys and see if RJ took a step and see if Mitch took a step, see what like real coaching, see what, what they can do. I'm really excited about it. Maybe like I, am. I know, you know, people don't think no, that. But. No, you should be excited. I'd be excited. Yeah. I was excited when the Nets drafted Kenyon and Kerry Kittles, and they were. Mm. It's the same feeling. I understand that. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. because I work with you, that mm-hmm. I'm like more optimistic about the Knicks than you are. I know Vegas put them on a line at like twenty two and a half, but I'm like, mm. I listen to you talk. I'm like, this is a thirty seven to forty two win team, <laughs> but but maybe it's because there's there's two reasons I think that one I'm paranoid. Year, I'm paranoid so. they could actually be good, and that bothers me. And two, mm. I hear your Kool-Aid talk and I buy it. Oh, come on. <laughs> no Kool-Aid do. Uh, for me, man. It's all honesty for me. I'm just excited to see them. But you're but excited to the Kool-Aid. Yes, yes, yes. That's just I'm, like I'm seriously. putting. Yeah, I'm not like, oh, Obi Toppin, he fell. He stinks. Well, he fell because he stinks. I'm like, wow, he can't believe he fell to us. Maybe he's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's that. I, I get what you're saying. It's that positive spin on the kids. I'm, I'm just really excited to see him because – you know what's going to happen. It's going to be like, Obi Thompson going to come in the first preseason game against who they play in the Pistons or something. And then, like, he's going to come, he's going to dunk it on somebody on one of their yeah. 17 forward. And he's going to, and it's going to go like bananas and everybody's going to go crazy. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Obi Topping in the topping in the summer league would have been crazy. Would have been crazy. Like it was Kevin Knox summer league on steroids. <laughs> like, you know, it would have been, because he's just so athletically gifted that he would dunk on some G leaguer. <laughs> <laughs> just like ah, like right over his head you know so i'm looking forward to it and he can shoot people th- don't think he can shoot but he can shoot he's not just a dunker he's not just like sean kemp you know what i mean he really can get up he really can shoot it so do looking you forward to it, man. do you think for uh fans that listen to this podcast they'll be watching more nets because they are rooting for them to fail it depends i don't know 
It depends. It depends on the person. But yeah, no, I think people are going to be paying attention to it. I don't know if they're going to watch the games, but they'll follow Twitter and follow what's going on. If they're losing, they'll pop it on. If it's a train wreck, they'll pop it on. If it's like a big game, you know, a Thursday or whatever game, whatever night the games are on TNT, you know, a big game like opening night versus the Warriors. Of course, they're going to watch, you know, things like that. But you know what's going to happen also. First game, if the Warriors come in and stomp the Nets out like by 30 right. points, Steph Curry right. scores 47 points, right. then everybody's like, oh, can Kyrie and Durant coexist? Even though it's right. one game, it doesn't mean anything. Sure. <laughs> Just, of course. You want to have like a decent game down to the wire where they where they win for you, you for your sake. But you don't want to have it like uh, they get blown out or if they blow someone out because it'll be the two, either whack, out of whack too much. Like this is the yeah. greatest team of all time or – Wow, this is a this this team looks like shit. <laughs> well, I so. just don't I don't even know what to expect with this team. There's so many wild cards, yeah. so many so much unknown with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen Kyrie and Kevin Durant play together. I've never seen Kevin Durant play. Who the mm-hmm. hell knows what Karis is going to look like with them? You know, right. I, I I don't know if the chemistry is a problem. You know, is Steve Nash really? You know, remember Steve Nash is their head coach. He's no experience. I think he's going to be okay because I I think. I think it'll be okay. He's a basketball guy. But I don't, yeah. I don't, you know, it's not like they, it's not like they hired, um, I don't know. Derek Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> I think Steve Nash has, Derek Fisher. I think the big thing for Nash is yeah. he's got the respect of Kevin Durant. And I know, right. oh, That's you're all saying that, that the you're saying that and you're giving mm-hmm. in to Durant. It's mm-hmm. got to be about the team. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I understand where we are with the times. Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't really. Like no, mm-hmm. he needs Durant's respect. So, uh, and he's mm-hmm. got a, he's got a staff around him of veteran coaches. So, granted, you don't want him saying on a podcast that you know I don't need to play basketball, and uh, you know Kenny Atkinson wanted me to run laps. What a fucking dick! You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so you don't want you don't want to put that on wax, like I said. But yeah, at the same think, time, I, you know it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know I think the stars I think the show. you know I think the truth is like they said out loud what a mm-hmm. lot of guys have always been thinking. And I think right. it annoyed former athletes. It, it, mm-hmm. it annoyed people that are like true to the idea of a the pure team. Of like, team. I yeah, don't, yeah. I don't think that's going down in Joe judge's locker room, you know, with the giants. <laughs> but I think with the NBA, <laughs> this is the shit that happens, but to hear it be right. said out loud was really annoying and really obnoxious. Of course it's obnoxious. You and I are everyday mm-hmm. people. We go to work. We work with a team. Like, who am I to come on this podcast and be like, that kind of statement? Oh, it's disgusting. But truth be told, yeah. that's just what reality is. Now, does it work with Nash? That's a whole nother, you know, does it really work? I don't know. Right. That's, that's a different discussion. We'll find out. But he said mm-hmm. out loud, what's probably the reality in a lot of winning team locker rooms. Unfortunately, you know, like maybe, maybe not Miami, but I think that shit happens all the time. Right. Right. You know, uh, that's true. And, and you know what we can, Knicks fans are a little hypocritical in this way where they're praising the Knicks staff for signing, hiring, signing or hiring 75 assistant coaches. Right. You have all these experienced guys from Mike Woodson to whoever, Kenny Payne. You know what I mean? Right. And then the, the Nets do the same thing. Like they hire Steve Nash. He has no experience whatsoever on the bench. And, but he, he keeps Jacques Vaughn to the, for the defense. Right. And then he hires Mike D'Antoni for the offense. And then you have two experienced coaches there. Mike D'Antoni has been in, in the NBA forever. And, sure. you know, we can joke about him all you want call him Pringles, man. But you know, the guy is, he knows his basketball. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Absolutely. They're, they're surrounding Nash with the right guys. Steve Nash has forgotten more basketball than any of us have, will ever know. So it will be a transition for him. I'm not really concerned with Steve Nash, how he's going to handle Kevin Durant and Kyrie. I'm more concerned how he's going to handle the rest of the team. Like how is he going to keep them all together when, they exactly. everybody that's, knows that's that Kyrie point. and Kevin are running the team. You know what that's I mean? Like, point. how are they? You know, how are you going to coach? You know, name the backup point guard. You know, when you're, you know, like it's just how can you right. do that? I don't know. I don't know. That's just how I feel. No, I think that's but, an excellent point. We'll see. Yeah. No, I, no, oh, I, I really I do one. because that's an excellent, I, excellent point. That's what's up. Yeah. Thanks. No, it, 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 well, you earned it. I did good. I did good. I did a good. I did a good. Thanks. No, but you're good. right. Like dealing with. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a good point. I, I haven't even mm-hmm. really thought about it, but dealing with Spencer Dinwiddie's minutes, dealing with how he's going to mm-hmm. handle the Jared Allen, DeAndre Jordan dynamic is more interesting than Kevin Durant being Kevin Durant. Like, 
Kevin Durant's right. a, a basketball savant. The guy knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who For his sure. coach is. He's going to go out and do his thing. But managing that second tier ego to making sure that all works. But that kind of comes back to the point of the James Harden trade. Like they didn't want him, but they did. How do those mm-hmm. other guys handle that? And how does Steve Nash as the coach, his hardest job, his hardest task, really, and, and you kind of alluded to this, is keeping this whole team together, knowing there's the cloud of that and the cloud of this is his first year with, with the team, keeping that cohesive unit. Because teams that win titles, they have guys that are interchangeable parts and respect and believe in each other. And did the Nets because of the James Harden news already put themselves back a couple of steps and there's a lack of trust within the locker room. That's my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. You know, like Nick fans can joke about it, but like for me, seriously, that's my fear is that these guys don't like each other and that they're going to go out there on the court and the chemistry problem is an issue. And if that's the case, they're not going to win a title. Like it's not going to happen. If if there's, they're going to win games, they're going to be shitty teams they are too talented. But are course, they going to go out and have the mentality to win a title if behind the scenes? I said it, menta- like the culture sucks. Mentality. They're not going to, it's not going to work. It won't, they, they yeah. won't win a championship if they don't like each other. Mm-hmm. They're, no, they ain't true. that good. And, they're not, they're not, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not Jordan, Barkley, and a last one. Right. It's not the Warriors. Right. Not the ago, Warriors. Yeah. They, they don't have that level yeah. of talent. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's no, it's true. Good. And it's like Shaq, we bring it back to Shaq, the second Shaq mentioned on the podcast. He mentions this all the time in interviews. He's like, Shaq and Kobe doesn't win you the rings. You know, the Robert Ori's, the Derek Fisher's, the, you know, whoever wins yeah. you those rings. <laughs> the, the, those are the guys that come in and win you the championships because they're the ones who are hitting the big shots. They're the ones who are open. They're the ones who are doing the little things, diving out of bounds and getting the ball. You know what I mean? They're the ones who are doing right. it. You know, Shaq and Kobe are going to show up and score 35 points a, a night and, and do their thing. But that's the points. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's, what else is there? You know what I'm saying? So they got to play defense. So it is about the whole, the whole thing. And the problem that I had with the Nets plan was it's like they have to do it this year because it's all, it's, 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 it's a ticking time bomb. It really is. Whether it's the health of both players, whether it's, you know, Durant's age progression getting worse, you know, getting older, you know what I mean? Like he's going to lose a step or two if he hasn't already. We don't know. That's the, that's the other intriguing thing. He might be fine. He might be LeBron and play to his 40 and be fine, but we yeah. don't know. And that's why this year it has to be this year. You know what I mean? It, like this is their, they have to get like the Celtics big three when they got Durant, uh, Durant when they got uh, Garnett and uh, Pierce and your other, your old friends. You know, those that they, they did it the first year, like they knew, like, we got to get this done because <laughs> they didn't get back. They didn't win it again. They got back, but they didn't win it again. You know what I mean? So because they got injuries and whatever and then stupid trades and, you know, whatever. We know the story, but it, they have to get it done this year. It has to happen, especially in the short season. And just you don't, know, don't disagree. That. Don't disagree. Yeah. This is their best mm-hmm. chance. But, you know, right. maybe Durant plays great and that narrative mm-hmm. changes. And next year is right. a better year and something changes. But this is going back to like episode six. I agree. I agree. You're right. This is their Mm -hmm. year. But if it was Mm -hmm. Tobias Harris and D'Angelo Russell, it wouldn't even be a, it wouldn't matter. So at least this is the opportunity for it to be this Mm -hmm. year. And maybe they prove, Mm -hmm. maybe they play great. We'll see what happens. And then next year is a possibility, but this is a possibility. So that's as a fan, that's all I can ask for. And this, this whole year is going to be weird. Alex says, the pandemic, no fans. Like, who knows? You know, my biggest you know, concern is you who know, knows. Like, we see Steel- Steelers, Ravens yeah, are yeah. playing on a Wednesday night. Like, <laughs> who the hell knows? From what a Thursday. Kind of bullshit from Thursday. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm like, yeah, it's a week. My later. wife's a Steelers yeah, fan. I went from like, oh my god, we got a Steeler game doing? tomorrow at four o'clock. Like, I don't Just know. The point the is, there could be some weird NBA anyway, bullshit. Yeah. But go, go ahead. What are you gonna say? I was going to say, I, I, the weirdest part about this season is the 72 games, because usually you have those landmarks of wins. Like, okay, you win 40 games, you're an, mm. okay, you're an okay team. 45, you're a really good team. 50, you're an you're excellent team. 60, you're championship level. You know what I mean? Now it's like, what's the math? You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, I know you yeah. subtract 10, I guess, but is it really real? Because it's a little shorter of a season and there's no crowds. So there's really a court advantage. And it's just like, it's, it's a weird well, year with that aspect. You well, know? not only the, not, not only the math, but the resting mm-hmm. element, if there's 72 mm-hmm. games and you're looking at a, a, a season back on the, the NBA bubble, mm-hmm. you know, like how many games is LeBron James playing? 
Like the Lakers are not like, what are they going to do to get ready for the playoffs? This is going to be a bizarre seven. They they could win 72 games. I feel like the Lakers can go 50 and 22 and you will, you won't even see LeBron. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be really weird with resting. Mm -hmm. Like, like for the Nets, I'll bring it back to them for a second. This is a team that they need reps together. They've never played together. The Nets need mm-hmm. to see reps together. The Nets need to play together so that when they get to the playoffs, they're good. And I know this is a little different because of the bubble, but look what happened with the Clippers. They mm-hmm. didn't right. play together, and then they got to the playoffs and they got their ass kicked. So they were talented enough right. to make it a round or two, but then they got to the playoffs and they got swatted because they weren't. They didn't have the chemistry level. So that's another fear I have with the Nets kind of bringing back to your point of the 72 game season, I need to see the Nets play games together. And that's why I wish there were more games for the Nets in that regard. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. And I, and I hear you there. I I had a good point and I totally forgot it. I was like, listen, it was really intense listening to you. And then I totally forgot the Mm. point, but good point. You know, (laughs) it's a weird season. And, and you know, the clip back to the Clippers, it's like they kept adding different pieces too. They added Marcus Morris, they added Reggie Jackson, they added all these people. I think they added Reggie Jackson, whoever they just kept adding. They resigned them tonight too guys. Yeah, they did. Well, thank God Enix didn't get him, man. That would have been a mess. But anyway, so, you know, they got they kept adding players in this and everybody's resting and then you can't do that unless work. you're yeah, unless unless you've you're the Warriors and you've won three championships in a row already sure. or whatever, two championships, whatever they whatever it is, three and four years and you're just like riding through riding the coattails and like, all right, we'll just turn it on later or something, you know? You can't do that when you're a new team. So, but you know, Steve Nash can't tell him to play. <laughs> Kyrie will say I'm playing or not. I mean, most stars say it, but it's just it goes back to that. You you can't say it. you can't put that on on you know on wax like I said. But we'll see what happens. I'm just excited to see the next preseason game just to see some basketball. I haven't seen my team play since March 11th, I think, or 12th, which is crazy. <laughs> like, you know, so it's just it's absolutely I think, absurd. Um, I forgot what what was going on. Anyway. That's funny because I think that's when I had COVID. Mm. I got that. Yeah. That was around that date because that was that Knicks Hawks game Day. with Vince Carter. Yeah. And then I think I had COVID like two days later. You're like, hey, I'm not feeling well. We can't do the podcast tomorrow, but I think I'm just paranoid. And then I didn't Did hear that from would you for happen? Like 48 hours. Yeah, I didn't hear from you for Did like 48 hours. Did we miss a podcast? Uh, I think we just like pushed it back maybe. And we might have like done it a little bit later. I don't remember, no. to be honest. I kind of remember it was, it was that now, all the text. I was like, I, I, it's like, I think I'm out of it. You know what I did when I had COVID? I well, downloaded it. What's that? I don't know. I don't know if we even started this. I think I was com- still coming on Mike Delivers. I think we were going to do something on that. Oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. Because we That's started this point. once, you know, my wedding got postponed and, and yeah. the pandemic really hit. That's yeah, a good point. Had, yeah. But we were going to do something like at Hudson Street and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. No, that's right. We're not going to do Hudson Street anymore because I quit. Yes, yes. Although we could that's probably good. get in there if I wanted to, but I don't know if I want to go in. <laughs> Act like you're like still working. Hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> no, in that place, you could probably pull it off. <laughs> just walk in with a hoodie like that and act like you work here like hey man i know work at the well, pass. what's up man How's it going? <laughs> i don't have my pass to get through security yeah. but i know people mm-hmm. we could go up there we could just record like, oh dude i forgot my i forgot my oh oh like get a visitor's pass and go up there yeah we can get a visitor funny. pass and do it you want to do it sure sure i mean well, that you was got this beautiful that was skyline behind you yeah man just moved my is that one of those fake right? zoom no, that, that's a fake zoom background like i'm right now if truth be told, look right the, now, look my, at the reflection. You can see the reflection. Nah, it's not that's fake. bullshit. My hand in the- like, like my background right now, I'm actually in my bathroom, <laughs> but I did the kitchen um, you zoom background. The you're, oh. I don't know if <laughs> you're really in Kentucky. I'm in Kentucky. Yes. That is the, the price of building in Kentucky. I said, look at my, be- my hand in the, in the window. See the reflection? Okay. I do see it's it. Me. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's a nice city. Yeah, man. I love this apartment. Yeah, man. So the benefits of a pandemic, the apartments got cheaper and we were able to move and, and I'm happy and, you know, living the dream, you know, bigger place. Nice, you know, nice view. It is pretty new puppy who keeps us up every night still, but love her to death too. Ruby, shout out to Ruby and shout out to Hannah, my fiance. And that's it. <laughs> She gets so mad at me when I don't say her name on the podcast. She's like, I'm like, oh, you should listen to this one. It was funny. And she's like, did you talk about me? I'm like, You're so no, we're talking about the Knicks. Like what? Like, oh yeah. And speaking of RJ Barrett, my fiance, Hannah, I love you so much. That's not what I'm <laughs> saying. When you... <laughs> the shout out there. No, it's because you bring up your dog 
And then you feel like yeah. if I shout out, oh, shout shit. out my dog, <laughs> I better shout out my fiance. That's what happened. If it was the other way yes. around, you wouldn't be like, shout out to Hannah and shout out to Ruby. No, but you felt a <laughs> sense of guilt and then had to do that. Right. That's right. Well, shout out to that Leon the cat. Leon. What's up, Leon? Leon already made, it, made his appearance on, on the yeah, podcast earlier. <laughs> he jumped on you. It seems like oh. he's doing that every week. Does he know? Like when you're doing the podcast? He he's does. Like, I need to get on. He does. I love yeah. that guy. I love my cat so much. Yeah. Yo, yeah, by the like way, cool can, I, can I say this? We'll go off topic. Uh, raising a kid is a lot harder than I thought it'd be. It's like really difficult. Oh, yeah? It's a lot of work. <laughs> so I've heard. It was a lot no more work me, than I thank thought. You. Yeah. That's my mm-hmm. that's an honest take. But my wife's it incredible. It only gets harder once they learn how to talk. It only gets harder once they learn how to talk back. So they say. Once they say no. <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah. They say no means I, though, with kids. No means I. So if they're really saying no, they're just being independent. And they're like, hey, they don't mean disrespect. They're just like. I don't want to do this, but I don't know how to say it. So no. That's how I treat I you. you. So when you say no, I don't like the Nets. I'm like, no, you're just being independent. Yes. yes, yes, yes. That's true. No, but it, it's been a lot harder than okay. I thought. I was like, yeah, you just mm-hmm. throw them some crackers. They figured out. No, it wasn't the case. Here's a bottle. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Here's the <laughs> bottle. Uh, my cat, by the way, hates my son. Mm-hmm. Hates him. Really? really? Oh, jealous. They hate each other. Yeah, he hates him. He smelled mm-hmm. them one time, and then like he was like, Ugh. "My cat what is hates this? my kid." Is that weird? Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. I want them to be best friends because mm-hmm. I love them both well, differently. Yeah. I was like, "Guys, yeah. let's figure this shit out." Like we're all net fans. Like, fuck, <laughs> let's go. I've got common interest. Ruby, Ruby, she she loves me more. Hannah doesn't admit it, but Ruby loves me more. She comes to me and she gets like whenever like if we're like hugging each other, me and Hannah are hugging each other and give each other a kiss. Ruby comes running over like. <sighs> Like jumps in, yeah. like it starts going crazy. Why do you like, think that so is? Fun. It's cute. I don't know. I think I, I treat her. I give her more attention. Um, I play with her more, and <laughs> I don't know. Hannah does all the things like that. You don't want that that uh, that are annoying. Like, oh, we gotta brush the dog right now. I'm like, oh, can you leave the dog alone? You know right. what I mean? Like, it's always right. like, and the dog sitting there, like, fuck, can you stop? Like, yeah, like, stop. That's it's putting funny. Brush on my ass. Like it hurts. Like can you stop. Right. You know, like so. Anyway. It's funny you say that though say? because. I feel like there's something to that, like uh, yeah. with my son and good with my cat, cat. Good cop, bad cop. I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. Leon, let's let's play with the stick. We'll jump around, and then my wife's <laughs> doing all the other bullshit. But it's it's mm-hmm. kind of I feel yeah. bad. I, it sucks, but it's true. You know, like mm-hmm. with my wife, and she's you know constantly breastfeeding him. Like for him the to her over here, it's like, a yeah, meal. Like it, yeah, a, it's a yeah, meal. Yeah. Like when he looks uh-huh. at me, it's like, ugh, he's the goofy oh, idiot. Oh, okay. I like him. But mm-hmm. no, like, yeah, no, my cat's not breastfeeding with my wife. That's not happening. Well, you could try to breastfeed your you can try to breastfeed your son if you wanted to. I don't know if it'll work. He might well, he might latch yeah, well, on. Well, this happens too. Like if he if my wife if my wife's breastfeeding and then like she has to get up for a second and kicks gives me the kid, yeah. he'll start attacking my tits. And I'm like, dude, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> he'll do it. It's crazy. I want to try it just to see, like, maybe I can produce a little milk, which would be fucking cool. <laughs> a net fan that I don't know how cool that would be. I don't know if that's very cool to be okay, <laughs> be whatever. Kind of being maybe you get on TV, though. You know, you can but be no. like, no, I know. I'm joking, <laughs> Alex. See, we, just we, we, just we just got weird. We just got weird. We just got weird. We didn't get weird. It's the fucking off season. There's three weeks. I was, to being, talk about. I was joking too. Well, the podcast veered yeah. off from you know, can Steve Nash handle these personalities? To <laughs> can Mikey produce milk? So here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. Nah, I won't it's very it. exciting. No, please don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, your no, fake no. background. That's like oh my you God. know, I have nipples. Can you milk me, Greg? Yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway, no, yeah, joke. being a yeah, right. I have nipples. Can you milk me, Greg? It's a it's a it's a classic. Um, what's the actor's name? Mm-hmm. Jerry, De, Jerry, Robert De Niro, Robert De Niro. Right. That's it. Yeah. Classic movie. Ever hear of him? You like gangster movies? He's a good actor. You ever hear of him? I do. I do. Not all of them. I've never really gotten into all of them, but I love Goodfellas. Great, yeah. great movie. Filmed in a lot of my hometown, five towns. So that's nice. also adds to it. Very exciting. Yeah. That's so, cool. Yeah. You know, so, um, 
Yeah, no, I like gangster movies. They're fun. I like gangster shows, some of them, but not like I'm not really into like yeah. every gangster movie. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like after you've seen one, you've seen them all. Like, okay, there's a boss. You got to kill the boss to be the boss. And, you know, okay, <laughs> somebody <laughs> fucked up and snitched and, you know, either dead or in jail. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Right. And scene, you know, so anyway, I hear your dog. I'm excited to see RJ Barrett, but <laughs> what'd you say? I think I hear your dog. You might that might have been the dog Ruby's. It probably hears me talking. That's why I'm like, get me out of here. I'm she's she's in the bedroom with Hannah. She's probably like, get me out of here. How is she adjusted to your that. new apartment? It's weird because we move next door. So sometimes when we walk the dog walker, she goes to the other apartment. Mm, you know, she still sense. gets confused. Yeah. You know, I feel bad because she was that's where she was a puppy and from like a real real puppy, like her first night, and you know what I mean, like so. It's weird, but I think she, you know, now she's getting used to it. There's more space here so she can run around more. Yeah. There's better views. I'm sure she'll like the views a lot more. Dog, you know, windows. So, yeah. No, that's cool. I want to meet your dog. When I, I'd love to meet your dog. Truth be yeah. told, I really would love to. I love she's animals. I'd, I'd love to meet your dog. That would make, that yeah. would make me happy. All right. Well, that's good. What, well, when are you going to come visit? Come visit. Come visit me in Jersey. Bring the dog. We'll have fun. I'll call you out right yeah, here no, on Bad Weather Fans. I want you to come visit. I'll do it. We're gonna okay. we're gonna uh, peace me. treaty because I know you know like I there's there's a, got a lot of good fans that listen to this show and they they understand my humor and mm-hmm. they understand I'm I'm not a bad person but there are people Alex that think like I think I'm a bad guy because I just think the Knicks are a bunch of losers I mean big deal I mean you're you're losers but that doesn't mean people you treat me like that it's just basketball yeah no yeah no no you're not like a bad I put person. this I you're put this guy. tweet out of. Uh, this uh, this exhibition 10 or Exhibit 11 or whatever 10. it is and like people were know. really mean to me <laughs> really rude really bothered me what was the one thing that somebody said somebody said oh somebody's like the disrespect of all freight i'm like oh uh, calm down man <laughs> like you know you didn't piss know. on his grave he's a li- you know what i mean like chill out you know what i mean like, come up with better anyway. is this is this the best joke you can come up with my answer is yes yeah, that's the best. That's it. <laughs> that's the best I can come up with, man. I need better writers. Yeah. That's the truth. Mm. Honestly, it's it's really funny how this this podcast has gone this way because there's really nothing to talk about. Everybody can keep tweeting and arguing about the same shit over and over. But like, you go on a podcast, it's like, all right. So the Knicks didn't hire, sign any free agents. They signed Austin Rivers, and you know they're going to win whatever games. And the Nets have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. We'll see what happens. Nobody knows. Right. And, the Lakers are going to be in the finals versus the Bucs probably. And, uh, you know, let's see what happens with the Celtics. And the Bucs, they haven't made it to the we third round. The, three, the Bucs, they haven't made it past I, the I'm second just, round. I'm just throwing team out there. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. See, we got a topic. There we go. No, but I'm just saying, like, We're not it's just the Bucks, same stories over and over. And people are tired of it. Yeah, no. I you, know what, you know what's funny? Le- how LeBron James is, is a hypocrite. Can we go there for real quick? How he's like, I can't play right away. We just finished the season. Like, man, you used to be in the finals. Then you would go to the Olympics. Then you would go to the season. Like, I don't want to hear that the NBA needs to go on hold because you need another three weeks off. Like, give me a break. Take your rest know, days and, and relax. I know he doesn't do that anymore, but still, it's like, come on. I just had to say that. Anyway, no, you want to get to the poll question before with. we start talking about something else? What? You think uh, what you, you think it's a foregone conclusion the Lakers make the finals? I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. No, I don't. I don't so, either. I think we have to see what happens. I think the Clippers you know, are going to be better. Health. It's a weird season. I think the Clippers mm-hmm. got a bad rap from what happened, and I do think the bubble their hurt coach Paul George. What they hire? Um, I forgot who they hired as coach. The I did too. Ty Lue. This is the great content you got here, at bad weather fans. And who did the Clippers the hire as their coach? coach? I don't know. Oh, Tyron Lou, your boy. I was right. Yeah. And so then yeah, Tyron. Okay, Lue. they're gonna suck. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I David Blatt yeah, coming suck. back. <laughs> David Blatt. Yeah, no, well, that was the other way around. Maybe David Blatt, imagine David Blatt takes Tyron Lewis this time and wins a championship with the Clippers. That'd be crazy. That'd be kind of cool if he beat LeBron. It'd be kind of fun. Yeah, David Blatt will never come back to America again, though, after what no. happened. So <laughs> he's, he's, well, he's like, with, I'm, he's I'm, with I'm, the Knicks. King in Israel. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was an advisor, right? He was just a special advisor, though. How did, <laughs> Nothing position. You're like, I want to be an advisor. I'm an advisor right now for the Knicks that, you know, just go on Twitter and they read all the tweets that everybody sends out. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they read all, every team reads the fans tweets to see what they're thinking. You know what I mean? So we're all technically advisors for the team. You know what I mean? They have to see the gauge, what the fan interest is. Like, what is an advisor? Like, seriously, what is a special advisor? Like, okay, you're just a guy here that, 
Hey, David, what do you think? Like, why do you need to pay this guy something? <laughs> just call your friend. If he's your yeah. friend, just ask his opinion. Hey, hey, Dave, I, what, what do you think I should do with this uh, draft pick? With Julius I have a, Randall? <laughs> I, I have a goal like, for us. Trade him? You know, I, don't know. I have a goal for us for 2021. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. For you and I to do a podcast in person. Mm. Well, when you invite That's me cool. over, we can do a podcast. I, you and I talked about no, We don't know the schedule yet. We don't know the schedule. Yeah, right, you and I right. talked about this before, but like this was um, before all this happened. But it would be so much fun for us yeah. to do a podcast in person and have have our fans. And I and I have this, I have this idea of a Zoom idea, which we can flush out later. We don't have to do it here, although I kind of teased it. But mm. I, I like I like the idea of getting Nick and Net fans together. And there will be more net mm-hmm. fans. I understand that. But I like the idea. That was a joke. You, didn't you like the lie. idea? Oh, I would totally was just like waiting for you to get to the point. Of the- I was saying there'd be more net <laughs> fans. There won't be more net fans. That's fine. No, there's no such thing as a net fan. I, I like the idea of us doing like a, like, like this is my dream, Alex. You ready? Mm-hmm. You and yeah. I are at like a bar outside of the Barclays Center, outside of, I, I can't remember the name, but wherever the next play. I like the idea of us doing a show out there People come, we react, we have a couple drinks, we have fun, and then we go watch yeah. a Nets Knicks game. I, I think that'd be so cool. I really do. I think that'd be awesome. That would be fun. No, definitely, definitely. I, I would love to do that. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, but we'll see. We'll see if that ever happens. It's probably gonna have to be twenty twenty two, to be honest, but yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. And at that point Rand will be on the Hawks. <laughs> Traded for Bo- Boyan Bogdanovich uh, in a first round pick. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that though that he is on the Hawks and we go back to the remember episode oh. 38 where there was no Knicks or Nets number? Well, remember the number now that you said Durant will be on the Hawks. Is Bogdanovich number 38? <laughs> I think he is. Hold on, oh, hang man. tight, sing a song. That was condescending. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I can't look it up. I, I, I don't have this. the energy. I'm not good at the filler talk. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, all right. Anyway, I'm excited. So realistically, before we get to the poll question, how many wins do you think the Knicks will, ha- will have in the 72 game season? So, so subtract 10 or f- let's subtract five from what you would think your regular win total would be in an 82 right. game season because, you, you know, give or take and time in the season, you know, whatever. But what do you think? Do, 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 I'm going to go on a 72, 32 wins. Th- wow. Wow. So 33, 34, 35, 30. You think they're a 37 win team in 40 in an 82 game season? Because uh, I've said them and subtract five. I'd say it's about that. I'm just going to always go that route because yeah, I 32 just, is just a 30. Is... <laughs> nah, you know, the truth is, I just don't. We don't know. We don't know. I don't know. I'm so don't know what scared of the, when the Knicks yeah. turn the corner. Mm. It scares me. Okay. Yeah. All you Knicks fans, it scares me. So I, I'm just going to be optimistic. Good. You guys still have PTSD from 2013 because that was your year to be like, all right, the Nets are in Brooklyn and we're here and we got this good team yeah. and we made this big trade. And then the Knicks, that was their one good season in the last 20 years. And they had stomped on your your yeah. whole, your shine. You know what I mean? And it, mm-hmm. it, was, it was hilarious. That was a good year. That was a fun year, I have to say. So, anyway, so, what so do I'm you gonna, think? I don't even know what the Knicks wins are going to be because I want to see what Obi Toppin is. Because, I, you know, is he dominant? You asked me a question, Mitchell you got to answer your own question. If I had to say, so let's say you subtract five from a regular 82 game season, let's say hypothetically for a 72 game season, you could, oh, yeah. not 10 because, like we said, I'll say around 27 games, 26 games. You know what I mean? I'd say, you know, we have to see. I'm just not very positive about the, the win total, but I'm positive about the kids, if you want to say, because they don't have a point guard. <laughs> like Austin Rivers has been playing two guard for the last couple of years. People don't realize he's a combo now. And like, who's the, you know, who's the start? And you're not going to start Austin. Is Austin Rivers a starting point guard? Is that good? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we, you know, but it's quickly, it's quickly the real deal. It's a steal, you know, but even the late draft, late first round picks, they usually take a while to develop. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen this year. Well, like look at, for examples, um, your boy, Spencer Dimwitty was a second round pick. Mm Mm-hmm. It took him four mm-hmm. years before he became a rotational right. player. So it just right. takes time. And look I, at Mitchell I, Robinson, who we're, we're, we're saying is a cornerstone of the franchise, and he still hasn't reached his potential. Sure. People, you know, he still doesn't Would play you trade Mitchell Robert? Would you trade yeah. Mitchell for Jared Allen? No. No. 
Never. You think Mitchell's better? Yeah. Absolutely. I think Jared Allen's, you know, he can get a little better, but I think he's about what he is. You know what I mean? Like he'll be, you know, even though he's younger, about the same age. I, I just, I don't know. Cause I think Mr. Robinson is just the athleticism is just mm. through the roof. I know he, he, you know, and he's, you know, you've seen the gym practice videos. He's working on that jump shot. You know what I'm saying? So you never know, but no, I'm just kidding. But no, I just think no, he's I, just I, athlete, I, so athletically gifted that it's just, there's, there's a different level there for, for Mitchell Robinson to reach. I, I, I always just think that's interesting because I don't think there's a right answer for that question. I think that's your opinion, mm-hmm. but it's not yeah. like who's better, for James sure. Harden or my cat, like James Harden. <laughs> but I, I, I just think okay. that's an interesting topic. Um, uh-huh. I'm just curious. Just 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 curious. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think Jared Allen says just a should question. start for the Nets, but. um. Well, yeah. outside of perspective, anyway, then, who do you think should be the starting point guard for the Knicks? Who do you think the starting point guard should be for the Knicks? You have Quickly, who's kind of a point guard. Rivers is kind of a point guard. Nilakina, Dennis Smith Jr., Alfred Payton. You, you got, you I, know, I think it should be Frank. Guys. Yeah, just throw them out there and see what happens. I, yeah. I agree. Like, yeah, I think RJ will kind of run the point anyway. You know, RJ will probably run the offense. I think it should be Frank. Anyway, to be honest. But... Yeah, because he can I mean, guard I... the, the, the good point guards. Yeah, he can stick with them. So. I also think because he's so then young. Your starting lineup is, yeah, he was so he's young. And Julius, I, I like Julius Randall. I think he gets so much hate, but they got to get rid of him. Yeah, go ahead. No, I don't think Randall's Frank, part. Frank, no, Rand, so Randall's not part of the uh, the future plans. You know, he's um, mm-hmm. Julius Randall's like we're still here. Julius Randall's like use my example. Like he would be a nice fit as a Nets power forward on a title team. Right. Help with the rebounding, right. give him some scoring off the, on mm. the bench side when the stars go down. But he's not the he's not the best player on a t- you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. using the Nets example because it's fresh on my mind. Uh, but I like I like Frank because yeah. you drafted him. He's younger. He can clearly play defense. Let's just see what you got. Mm-hmm. At least he's your homegrown Nick. Let's see what he can do. Austin right. Rivers is Austin mm-hmm. Rivers. You know what Peyton is like. Let's just let's just roll the dice, and if he yeah. sucks, he sucks. But at least there. you at least you tried. I don't know. That's mm-hmm. my thoughts. Mm-hmm. No, I hear you, and I'm I'm not believing Dennis Smith Jr. hype every year. It's like, oh, this is his, he's turn gonna turn page. He's gonna turn the page this year. He's still super young too, so you never know. To be fair, but I just don't see yeah. it with him. I just feel like he's got his chances. You know what I mean? Like he's young mm-hmm. still. He can turn around, and have a decent career, but I don't think he's gonna be a star. I don't see yeah. that. Yeah. You know, but. I, I agree, but then it's like you have to do Frank, you know, uh, RJ, um, who's a small forward. I can't even think. I'm so tired. I can't think. Frank quickly, RJ, up in a Mitch. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's just it's just weird. You better play all the kids. That's all I'm saying. You better play all the kids. Anyway, question, I'm too Alex. tired. It's like 11:20 at night. I have about three hours of sleep, so I'm sorry if I'm watching the somebody on the roster. I'll get a tweet like, you didn't even no, know pe- who's on the freaking roster. People you know, know like, you know your stuff. People know you are the authority. <laughs> on I am man not at a Knicks basketball. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. So I'm just a fan. Okay. So anyway, so here we go. Poll question. I kind of made this poll question as a joke, but then I forgot to put a new one. So I will still rock with it. So uh okay. Knicks fans, if, if you are happy with this offseason and love the quote unquote full rebuild, aka tank, I put in parentheses to be snarky. When should they actually try to win? I put in parentheses, try equal make moves to help the team win games in current in the current upcoming season. So if you're happy with the offseason moves and love this full rebuild, when should they actually try to win? Next year, two years, three years, or the 2024 draft is great. Like that's the year. I don't, I don't like you know, keep tanking through that. The Knicks are trying to yeah. win this year. The Knicks made the right move. Are they? That's a, that's a weird question. I know it was kind of a snarky question. I said yeah, it was, it was, kind it of was, it was arrogant. To do another one. It was arrogant <laughs> to give your answer kudos when maybe the team from the borough of Manhattan is making the right moves. I, I don't know if I like, you that. know, what's so funny. It's, it's, it's funny because everybody's like the Knicks are doing the right thing by doing nothing. <laughs> It's just like, so they didn't do anything. So it's like, it's like, okay, so congrats on not doing anything. Like, congrats. Mm-hmm. Good job, guys. No, so seriously. The congrats. winner of. We've been through this. Uh, you can add one guy and still keep your flexibility and make your team better and just try a little or, bit. Or at least give the uh, impression that you're trying. You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of a thing. Russell Westbrook, I get you want to be against that. That's fine. But like, you know, 
get me somebody like we've been through and see what happens. You could have done that. They could have done that. I'm sorry. But, um, and I'm not sorry to you because you don't care. You want them to lose. So what do you care? So what do you think one next year, two years, three years, or let's tank for the 2024 draft uh, next year, next year, one 61%. No, uh, two years, 26%, three years, 2.9%. And then 9.7%, the 2024 draft is great. I think that was just people being funny. 2024. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, that, that'll be our, gonna try to our win. next that presidential like, when, when, cycle. Jeez. Oh, Trump's going to run again, right? So anyway, <laughs> no, Donald Trump Jr. is going to run again. I, I was going to run a guarantee. <laughs> guarantee you. Your tweet, guarantee by the way, you, pissed me off. Meant, uh, Don't use Nets and Trump in the same tweet. That That was annoying. <laughs> Steve Nash sounds like oh, Trump. Man. I'm like, okay, you don't like what he's saying, but don't say Steve Nash sounds like Trump. That's ridiculous. Well, he sounds like Giuliani. He sounds like Giuliani. He's defending Trump. This you know, Oh, this is a topic I've been dying to get into. Have you ever seen somebody that was such a hero? Like 9-11 mm. is, is yeah. you and I, like one of the worst acts. We lived of, it, yeah. The worst. And somebody yeah. that was so heroic and just mm-hmm. being such a pillar and helping this city brought us back yet through yeah. what was such an awful, mm-hmm. awful time could go right. to a place where he's now hated by people and is joked upon. Mm-hmm. You really need to be a fucking psychopath for that to happen. Oh my goodness. Right. Like right. he was a 9 11 hero. He brought down the mob. He brought down, I, I can't down get the real that. mob in New York. What happened to <laughs> and that then man? Then he got mayor, and then none of the, yeah, I don't know. What happened to this guy? It's crazy to me. He went crazy. Crazy. Yeah, he went crazy. It is what it is. I don't know. Can you think of a sports person that 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 happened to? That they were like a hero, and now they're like uh, the most hated person in the world. OJ, LeBron, I guess when he went to the, the oh OJ, yeah, but LeBron when he went no, to I mean, the, I'm serious. Like I'm answering your question athlete. seriously. OJ, yeah, 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 yeah OJ, I guess, yeah. Where he was like, yeah, he was in all these movies. Love, love to person. hated. Yeah. Now yeah. I know there's people that are like yeah. Giuliani because the election was taken away from us. I get it, but like yeah, this, sure. like Giuliani sure. was a real hero in American history for New York. Mm-hmm. To this, for sure, is weird. Two ends of the yeah. spectrum there. No, yeah. This yeah. is a next. I was thinking recent right? times. Next poll question. So forget about Giuliani. So what the next poll question was again, let me remind us before we start talking about Giuliani and whatever that thing was dripping down his cheek when he was in that weird press conference. So oh, if, you have, if you're happy down. with this, sorry, if you're happy with this offseason and love the full rebuild, when should they actually try to win next year, two years, three years or 2024? So we got our guy at L underscore Nino two zero one in the next three years. We got to let the young guys marinate a little bit, especially if we end up drafting our point guard in this year's draft. But then we will know what we have in RJ, OB, and Mitch and know exactly how to build around the roster, the roster around those guys and free agent year by year. That's my guy. Good. That's a good point. But three years is a long time to wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. you got to pay these guys eventually like RJ and whatever, but I guess you'll know who they are by then. So that's a good point. Then we have my guy at RJ Felton one. Every team is waiting on Giannis to resign or ask to be traded. So he thinks that this is what's happening, that they're doing the same thing over and over. Then we have, uh, these are all my guys. So this is another one of my guys. He goes, at blames underscore Dolan. He goes, there shouldn't be a timeline, quote unquote timeline. Rushing to win under a sort of a timeline is how teams make the bigger their biggest mistakes. Just let it play out and see what happens. So we're taking the no plan plan action here. Blames um, underscore have, score Dolan went after me on Twitter, I think. Yeah, he's the one who went after you for the Exhibit 10. Uh, yeah. I think he went after you Because normally I yeah. like him. He's a good dude. He's, but this was dumb. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably okay. listening. Shout out to him. Yeah. Shout out, BD. <laughs> so then we have at Jimbo Slice underscore underscore. It looks like two underscores. It's a really underscore, long one. So I'm underscore. assuming it's two <laughs> underscores. That's <laughs> <laughs> Underscore underscore. Okay. That's like Andrew. Andrew Claudio with underscore. Yeah. So then we go. I gotta yeah, trust right, them to, to build through the draft when the. <laughs> I gotta trust them to build through the draft when the kids are operating as a team with potential supplemented. So that makes sense. Then we have uh, we have oh, three or four more. Let's see if this gets boring for you. So we have uh, Jason Denaro. He's at Never Enough Thirty Two. This team is drafting Cade Cunningham and signing an elite free agent anyway away. Probably won't get to, to draft Cade. That's the problem. Or we can tank again in 2022. The 
Imani Bates, a.k.a. Kevin Durant 2.0, probably won't get him either. So I guess that's the guy in 2022. So Kevin Durant mm-hmm. 2.0, who's a senior in high school. So let's tank for that guy. So then we have um, at Ty Star TV. He goes, can't blame them too much. This is the weirdest offseason in my lifetime, LOL. That's true. Which is a good point. It's kind of like, let's just that's do nothing because what the hell are we doing that's, here? That's, that's actually a good point. really good point. Man, that's a, that's a really good point. That's the winner, Ty Star TV at Ty Star TV. I mean, it's true. The, it's the like question. this whole off yeah. season is strange. It's rushed. It's very rushed. It's very also. rushed. You know what I mean? Then we have, it does. Um, fe- it does feel like okay. We'll go into it a little bit. This is a good point. It's making me think. You're the mm-hmm. Knicks. Yeah. You know you're not winning this year. Let me kind mm-hmm. of align the stars for when things matter a little more and how we can manipulate and work. And go from there and we'll just suck through another year get a draft right. pick hope these kids are good and move forward i get that that's true like that. it's a pandemic year it's like for the jets this is the perfect year to go old 16 when nobody cares like i mean people right. care but it's a weird season and like you don't want your first jets super bowl since 69 and first in many people's lifetimes to be this year because it's just not what we're looking for <laughs> i mean i would love it i would be happy but it's just right Listen, I you know I want the full experience. If it's gonna happen, like right. the Chiefs got that last year. Chiefs fan, my buddy Mark, a big Chiefs fan, he got the whole experience well, yeah. and the world shut down. He got it in just in time. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. No, so it's I like think, I, I think, but you know, so, so that makes at this point. point the full experience. Like if the Nets were lucky enough to win it all, mm-hmm. I'm not getting the full experience. No, you're not. not it just. But, but take, I do think is take, the longer yeah. this shit goes, Alex the more mm-hmm. regular it will feel, unfortunately. Zoom parades. Yeah. 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 Like no fans. All the I know, mm-hmm. I know the Nick jokes. There's no fans anyway. But all of that <laughs> stuff will feel more real. Like mm-hmm. it just yeah. it'll be part of it, which sucks, but I, I understand mm-hmm. that. No, I mean the Nets are used to it because they have fake crowd noise going into games anyway. So they first of all, I was at those that. games with fake crowd noise. And let me tell you right now. It did happen. It was fucking fake. Totally yeah, fake. It, it would be like, <laughs> yeah, like where are but, these fans coming? <laughs> but I will say, like, I, I this is this is an yeah. old topic. I do think mm-hmm. that the net fan, that's a true net fan, really was a good basketball fan. I really do believe that. No, I and I think I think you have to stay loyal. Yeah. I do think this is something mm-hmm. you didn't know before you met me. And I think I've uh, taught you this is condescending. But I think that you that's, did you not realize. Me how net fans were really into hoops you always thought of net mm. fans as like this more modern day net fan with like the brooklyn bullshit but i don't think you realize mm. how many new jersey net fans were loyal and love their team and i think i stayed I've, with them yeah i think i've taught you mm. like there was some like legit real net basketball fans like really knew their stuff like i know dolan j trump comes on here all the time but he was a net fan that guy knows his mm-hmm. hoops you know, he and hates to tell you every player. He, on the Nets. Right. Yeah. He hates the Nets <laughs> yeah. now. And he is, he's not an F fan anymore. And that's fair. But mm-hmm. that, that he guy, was in New Jersey and that's that fan. guy knew yeah, his stuff. Exactly. Yeah. He really does. Like, yeah, there, there are net yeah. fans out there that really did know their hoops. And I, I think that may have surprised you from doing this. How was that? No, it did. It did. It did surprise me that there were so many, you know, because there are two different Nets fans. There's the, True. the Brooklyn Nets fans, the guys in their early right. 20s who are the, the hipster. That's the stereotypical one that I'm talking about that I can't stand. Sure. And then there's the the you where I respect you. Like, I don't want you to win, but I respect I respect sure. you more because you've been through the shit and like you you semi deserve this. <laughs> like, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right, right. I know you had semi, the, the Jason semi years, so. semi. It. Come on. You had the Jason Kidd years. You had some years, you know, whatever. <laughs> but you know what? But that's <laughs> yeah, a good point. Yeah. But that, that's what makes it yeah. co- you know, conflicting for me because I want to mm-hmm. see the franchise do well and I want to see yeah. them have like a real fan base and have annoying net mm-hmm. fans like there's annoying Nick fans. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I take pride in knowing like, I'm a real Nets fan. So it's a, it's a, it's right. sort of a conflict there. But I know ultimately for the growth of the health of the team, I don't want it to be like it's me and, you know, and seven other dudes that are excited about it. So I get that. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. That's a good, good point. Talk. Good talk. <laughs> I'll let you talk right there. So then two more real quick. At row Solo, S-O-U-L-O. He goes, this year with a million exclamation points. I think he was joking. But then we have at... Uh, Click Nick NYC with an uh, emoji of a basketball. He goes, he's at K L I Q N I C K. He goes, 
when the fans are allowed back. And so he's kind of saying, taking the same point as Ty Star TBD said, like, let's just wait this year. That's my guess is what he's saying. Like, yeah. Let's just, just punt on the year and like, who cares about this year? So we'll see. But hopefully the Mets continue to keep signing people. That's all I have to say. Let's get with the Mets. Sign, the Mets. Sign, I was doing a brief to the Mets sign today. May. This guy, this reliever may, I think. Is, is he good? He's a setup man for the, he was a setup man. He's, he's pretty good. He's a good, a good reliever. I don't know much about him, but he was a good reliever. I'm not going to sit here and okay. like I was watching like, you know, fucking Twins games. And he's not a closer, so he doesn't come up on my radar in fantasy. He's just a middle right. reliever, you know, like, but he was good. So in the stats, and I'm but happy about Pieces that matter, yeah. man. Yeah, he's not familiar. Let's, let's go. So that's it. That's for the poll question. And that's episode 38, I guess. <laughs> it's getting late. I'm going to pass out, as you can see. My there it is, ready. episode 38. Bad weather fans. Alex is, is ready to go to sleep. He's got that fake New York City skyline behind him, which looks just gorgeous. That's where the uh, Penny Hardaway, the, um, by the way. Penny, Penny Hardaway, Hardaway, head coach, Penny Memphis. Sure. One yes. day be the next head coach in three years when everything goes wrong with uh, Thibodeau. Uh, but anyway, actually, yeah, I wanted to get his Knicks uh, Penny Hardaway jersey. That would be a cool jersey. People wouldn't get that, though, because he was on the Knicks for a hot second. Lost to the Nets in the playoffs. He was there, right? Oh, he was on the team. I, I don't think know. he was. Yeah, actually, he might have been. I think he Who was. Who was he traded? He was, was he in that? Oh, he came know. with Steve Francis. He came with Steve Francis. Dude, this is, this is your shit whole fucking team. You Trevor, Trevor Reza right? for Steve Francis and Penny Hardaway. That was Jesus, great. Jesus, Trevor Reza. Trevor Reza. Trevor Reza still kicking. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, so, like... He's gonna be like traded to another. He's gonna be Trevor Ariza is gonna be on the Grizzlies, and then next year is gonna be back on the Rockets. That guy just yeah. somehow he's like a magnet to the Rockets. Oh my God, he's like that good player that has a tradable contract that every team would doesn't <laughs> mind having. Like, oh yeah, we'll take Trevor. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. he's hit some big shots. Hope Kobe won a championship like 15 years ago. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just so crazy. True. Uh, right. It's, uh, this is amazing. It is true. Anyway, battle with, battle yeah. with their fans, episode 38. Thank you guys for coming on here. We're a little bit delusional, but uh, we'll get a little closer to hoops. We'll get a little closer to games and not talking about Steve Nash, RJ Barrett. We'll actually talk about real if you're, shit. Or if, you're, if your milk comes out of your nipples, we'll see what happens. You know. Well, that might happen <laughs> next week. If you're lucky. We don't know. <laughs> I'll let you know. Shout out to all the Nick fans. All right. Have a good one, guys. Nipples. That was a weird way. To- <laughs> that was kind of creepy. Right. We'll let you know. You know. Anyway, have a good See one. See you guys. Bye.